So the task at hand for today is diving into the first upgrades on my new race trailer. So I just bought this trailer. It is exactly what I wanted. This is essentially my dream trailer. But it is missing one crucial element. And that is any form of storage cabinets, toolbox, etc. It's a finished out trailer with siding and lights and all that stuff, but there's no cabinets. The beauty of that though, is we can set this up and build this out exactly how we want it. So we've got an event coming up and we really need to get this thing set up. So we're just gonna dive right in. First stop, Harbor Freight. All right, so this is what I'm thinking. Literally, I feel like this is perfectly suited for a trailer for the front. It's a lot more room than we had in the old one. I'll show you the old one. Yes, this is what I had. Um, and it was nice. I mean, having this top area was nice, but it just, I don't know, it's kind of narrow. My plan was to be able to take it in and out, but I never did. So I think the bigger one's a better option. Look, little guy went in the trailer to see if he could come up with a good way out. What do you think, little guy? Yeah, cabinet on the left, I agree. All right, well, we kind of struck out at the old Harbor Freight. Man, this is the third time in a row I've gone to Harbor Freight to get something and they didn't have it. Uh, first was the engine hoist, second was a 20 ton press, third was the toolbox. So they get a truck tomorrow, hopefully they have one. Well, since I was waiting on figuring out if they were gonna get a toolbox in stock, I went ahead and knocked out some other stuff I needed to do, such as mounting all my tires for competition. For a clutch kicker so i've got one extra set in case i need it i don't think i'll go through five sets but just in case and we've got we've got the room i mean i put the spare all the way up there and then i've got my tires that i need to burn off because i'm getting rid of these 16 inch wheels and these are for the freedom factory drift night which is tomorrow got my straps up here i've still got a few more tires to toss in here but i can stack these three high i checked based on that i could fit like 40 tires up here which is absurd we'll never need that many tires but that's good news tire storage is just as good as i could have hoped bad news is toolbox we are sol i checked they don't they, they didn't get any in stock so it kind of works out because i found a trailer company a trailer cabinet company and they make cabinets of like all shapes and sizes, pretty affordable. So we could do some custom cabinets in here instead, instead of having the toolbox and then the cabinets. This is my dream trailer. I want to build it out right. So uh, I think we're going to do some custom cabinets and like an L with an upper and then the thin cabinets I want here. I've got a layout in mind that should be pretty sick. We should be able to fit so much stuff in here and still have plenty of room. Uh, but obviously that's not something we can do right now. For now, we're kind of so on the toolbox, but we do have another project to attend to. Uh, since it's so bright and a little warm out here and the shop's still not closed in yet I'm gonna pull this thing out and pack the trailer in here and then we'll uh, dive into the next project I'll show you guys what it is That is much better. Now we got shade. So the first project is replacing the busted off loading light. So there's a switch for them right there at the back door. Loading lights would be super nice. They basically shine on the back ramp. So if you're loading up the car at night, you can see the ramp, you can see everything. So I really want to replace them because the wiring's all there, switch is there, everything's there. I just got to put new lights on. The downfall is I couldn't find an exact replacement. What I decided to go with was just this, this little single row LED light bar. Now, I didn't, in the pictures, it didn't look this deep. I was thinking it was like this deep. That's pretty deep. I, I don't want this to look tacky. I just figured the single row would look clean because it would, you know, it would be about right. The cubes are, are, are bigger and taller, so I didn't want to do a cube. But yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's test fit this up there. We'll see what it looks like. Too bad. All right, I just want to make sure they work first. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's just a bad
night if they're aimed down enough. I might have to aim them down a little bit more. But I'm excited to see these at night. Sweet. Well, I'm glad we got those swapped on since the wiring in the switch was already there. And they don't look that bad. They don't look as bad as I was I feared they would. I made sure to silicone up the old holes from the old mount and then I siliconed the new holes before I screwed them in. So that way we shouldn't be getting any water in there. Very important. All right, next thing I wanna do is wash the truck and the trailer. Half the dang reason for getting a new, another trailer was to have a nicer looking trailer behind the old Fummins. And right now both of them are looking kind of nasty. The trailer, not so much. The truck is filthy. I've needed to wash this thing for a while now. All right, well, truck's all cleaned up. Man, this thing cleans up nice. It really does. You forget how clean something looks when it's clean until you wash it. This thing was filthy. Oh, it feels so good to see it cleaned, wheels cleaned, hooked to the trailer. Oh, I'm so, so hyped on this trailer. I love seeing trailers at night, trucks and trailers at night with all the lights. I'm a nerd, I'm a tow rig nerd. I don't know why, I like tow rigs, it's my thing. Uh, plenty of room in here still, as you can see with the Miata. And I've got it even a little farther forward than I need to run it. I could definitely run it a little further back, especially once the front's loaded down more with tongue weight. Excited to do cabinets in this thing. It'll be, whew, we got more work to do, but we're heading to the Freedom Factory tomorrow to go drifting for the first drift event there. And then we'll get back and get back to work on getting the truck and trailer ready for the next trip, which is a much longer trip to uh, Clutch Kickers. So I'm gonna close this thing up for now. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, well, we made it back home with the trailer from its inaugural journey, and man, expectations exceeded. I am so happy with how this thing towed. I mean, it was exactly what I hoped. Going down four feet, going to an aluminum trailer, it's just so much more effortless. And again, not that the other trailer was that bad, right? But this one, it's just effortless. Like getting up to speed, starting and stopping, especially with the loose converter that's in the truck because of the Cummins swap, which I'm gonna be switching out. It just, with the old trailer, it was just the truck was screaming to get up to like 45 and then the converter would lock and it would pick up a little better. It was hard to keep up with traffic. With this trailer, I can keep up with traffic no problem without working the truck hardly at all. So I, I am so happy. On the highway, this thing pulled like a dream. Dead, smooth, you felt less of the, the gooseneck weight pushing down on the truck over bumps. It was, whew, I am so happy with this. The reason that I, I'm so into like trying to make my tow rig setup as, as effortless as possible is because, you know, there's times where I drive to Texas and I drive 20, 22 hours straight by, you know, me driving the whole time. And, the easier it is to do that, the less strain there is, the, the better, the more energized I'm gonna be when I get to the track. Cause it's not only do I have to drive there, I gotta get there, I gotta unload all my stuff, I gotta drive or compete or whatever, then I gotta load all that stuff back up and drive back. So uh, again, that you know that was the reason and I'm just really happy that it, it was what I hoped it would be because we have this thing pretty loaded down. I mean, we've got tires for next round. We've got, had tires for this event. I've got all my tools that were in the old trailer, all my spares, all my fluids, straps, cooler. We're a little light on fuel jugs just because I had gone through the fuel last event. Um, and then we don't have the physical cabinets. But other than that, just about everything that's going to be in here is in here. I'm sure once we have better cabinets and like more storage, I'll probably end up getting and adding and tossing in more spares. Maybe I would say maybe a thousand pounds more max. So uh, it's pretty much what it's going to be like, moral of the story. It's not like we're taking it real light. So uh, it felt great. Very happy. One thing, I, ironically, my old trailer, I put new tires on it when I got it, granted. Never blew a trailer tire on that trailer. 1,000 miles each way to Texas, towing 7580, not once did I ever blow a trailer tire. I've had to change them because they were leaking air. Uh, you know, one or two of them, never blown a trailer tire. First trip with this thing, I blew a dang trailer tire. She done. As you can see. I mean, it still had pretty, plenty of life left on it. So I don't know. I mean, maybe we got a leak. I checked them before we left for Cletus's. I didn't check them before we left there, but I mean, it's only a two and a half hour drive, so I didn't think I needed to check them twice. Luckily, the trailer is very robust and uh, it didn't damage anything. Um, I mean, it scuffed up this. I'll have to try to clean that rubber off. Yeah, it's coming off. And got some rubber on right here. But other than that, trailer's fine. Thankfully, because you see a lot of trailers when they have a blowout and it just destroys the side of the trailer, blows the fenders off, like really messes things up. So I'm really happy that this thing is 
beefy enough to uh, take a blowout. So anyway, aside from the blowout, um, I did order all new tires. So I got not only new tires, but way heavier duty tires. I ordered another spare wheel. So we'll take the best two of these and keep them as spares. And then we should be good to go. We'll have two spares, we'll have all new tires. I think we'll be fine. I mean, it's something I should have done anyway. I just didn't really have time before this trip. Um, everything worked as it should, it was great. Moral of the story, it was freaking great. I am still ecstatic about it. It just felt so good. Okay, I am gonna get the car unloaded because we've gotta do some stuff to the truck. We got clutch kickers a week from right now. And uh, you know, we gotta do the trailer tires and we've gotta take care of some stuff on the truck to uh, make sure it's good to go for the trip. You you'll see. So, need to get the car out of here. Anything else that needs to come out for now. Um, we need to dump the trailer and get the truck in here and start messing with it. So thing number one we have got to get done on this thing is front brakes. They are, they were squeaking for a while. I put it off because I always thought about it last minute right before the event and uh, they're grinding pretty bad. I'm really hoping the rotors are good and we can just do pads, but we'll see. But before that, I want to test out another theory. Well, let me show you. So, right before the last round of clutch kickers, right before I left, our last event we went to, I was checking my truck tire pressures, which they're pretty much always good. So I almost didn't even check them. I checked them, the inside rear was at like 20 PSI. So I didn't really have time to do anything about it, but air it up and keep an eye on it. And I mean, it dropped pretty slowly. I tried to find a nail with it on the truck, couldn't really find anything. But all of this made me realize, I don't have a spare for this truck, none whatsoever. I run a big off-road 35 inch tire and a 24 inch rim. That is not something I'm gonna find if I get a flat somewhere in the middle of the country, somewhere, somewhere even two hours from here, right? So, as much as it pained me. I got a full size wheel and tire spare combo. I thought about it, I'm like, there's really no other options. I have the 10 lug adapter. It's not like I could use a stock wheel unless I had a pair of stock wheels and it would be like, a 31 and a 35 and this seemed like the only option now the biggest difficulty here is i have no idea where i'm gonna put it on the truck we could leave it in the trailer because most of the time i'm going far enough for this to be a big problem i'm taking the trailer but i also am like i don't want to have this whole expensive spare wheel and tire and not have it in the truck if i need it so I don't know, I'm kind of conflicted. I've got an idea of where it might go. We'll have to see how feasible it is. We need it, we'll test fit it with just the tire. But yeah, so anyway, we've got this because I do not want to get stuck stranded on the side of the road due to lack of forethought. So let's see if we can fit this tire where I'm thinking. All right, so I'm trying to see if it'll fit in the spare tire area. I have to like bench press this thing. I mean, it fits. It fits. Getting it in and out, not gonna be the most fun thing, but it sure does fit. 
All right, now we need to come up with a clever way to secure it. I mean, I can get it out with a jack. All right, before I go hog wild on that, because that could be a whole dang rabbit hole, I want to go ahead and knock out the front brakes because those absolutely have to be done. I can mount the tire and I can throw it in the trailer, worst case scenario for this round. You, you, you gotta do the brakes. So, whew, let the fun begin. Let's get this thing jacked up and this is the one thing that's not fun about the semi wheels. I love the semi wheels. I love the look. 10 lugs with adapters. So if you gotta take the, the rotors off, that's eight more lugs, plus the dually adapter, plus the wheels weigh like a million pounds. Definitely makes you uh, avoid taking the wheels off at all costs, which is why I haven't done this yet. So <laughs> enough chipper chevro, let's get into it. See if the big boys got it. These are torqued to a lot, so I, I don't have a lot of faith. Ah. Oh, that makes life easier. Okay, now this is gonna be the hard part. These rings, the hub centric ring is really tight to keep these from, because if they're off any bit, they're so heavy, you get a ton of vibration. So ah. we had to kind of suck it on with the impact. So getting it off, I don't know. Oh man, yeah, that's not gonna be fun. All right, well, that was definitely not great. But, we got it. What I ended up doing, spraying some PB where the hub centric ring is, let that soak in, because there's some corrosion there. And then I ended up having to resort to putting three lug nuts on loosely and driving the truck back and forth and steering it to get it to pop a little bit and then hammered it the rest of the way with a dead blow. So, I mean, <laughs> definitely not as nice as the wheel just coming off, but we got it off. So, I really need to look at the other rotor before I decide if I want to replace the rotors or not. It's just a lot more steps. I gotta pull the hub adapter off, and then we gotta pull the dually adapter off. I guess we're sending it, boys. We're gonna take this dang, dang thing apart. Oh, I was like, what are, you, what are the pets this thing's gonna come off? That is the dang things are tight. Is this a 19 too? Oh, well, okay. That went easier than expected. Yeah, if you didn't know, extensions rob a lot of torque off your impact. Took one of them out, went from not getting it off to getting it off. Well, last thing, brake caliper. Oh. All right, I'm calling reinforcements for this one. Jeez, Louise, I mean, it's tight till the end, till the bitter, bitter end. Yeah, rods on this side aren't that bad, but pads have seen better days. All right, well, good news is that wasn't too terrible, um, and I mean, pads definitely could use replacement, but they still had some life left on them, and it got me thinking. Rotor didn't look too bad on this side, didn't look too bad on that side, but there was a pretty rough grinding noise. It's from the rear. <laughs> I'm waiting lugged. The worst part about that is the whole wheel stuck on the hub centric ring thing. We gotta do that twice. But the benefit is it forces me to take that inside rear off and see if I can find any reason for the slow leak. And ideally, swap it with a new wheel and tire. Yeah, enough shiver jabber, it's time to run out the store and buy brakes. All right. Time to reverse the order. Oh, well, just kidding. We gotta push the pistons back in. <laughs> uh, dude, parts store pricing kills me sometimes. I wish I would've planned ahead. Rotors, 90 to $120 a rotor. Pad, $60. Online, same rotors, 30 something dollars. I could buy OEM rotors online for $70. That's what you get when you don't plan ahead and you need it right now. So, anyway, push these pistons back in and uh, start slamming this back together, I guess.
Well, that's one side down. It really wasn't too bad. Like I said, the worst part is taking the wheel off. That's what I'm most worried about about the rear. The rest of it's just a brake job, but it is funny because like a normal vehicle, pull the wheel off, that's kind of it for the rotor. Dually, you gotta pull the wheel off and then pull the dually adapter off. Dually with semi wheels, you gotta pull the wheel off, the wheel adapter, and then the dually adapter <laughs> off. So it's, a, it's like two extra steps, but Anyway, it feels nice to have that done. The rotors are pretty badly grooved, so it'll be nice to have all fresh brakes on this thing. I mean, I tow a lot with it. It's something I should have done when I built the truck, but we're doing it now. It'll be good. It'll be fresh. So I'm going to go ahead and toss this wheel back on and then tackle the other side, try to get that knocked out. And then Rollo's going to come over and help me with the rear. All right, so what I did, which I should have done in the first place when I put these wheels on, is I just ground out little reliefs where the lug nuts are because if they're not straight like that, it hits the wheel. So I just ground out just enough to where it would clear all the lug nuts because I think that's what it was stuck on the most. And then I cleaned up this with the drum disc and then put some PVE penetrating lube slash anti-seize on it just to keep it from hopefully getting stuck again because I don't want to dread taking this wheel off again. <laughs> So uh, we're just gonna have to do that on all six. So anyway, I'm gonna put the vanity covers back on, torque them all down, and uh, we'll move on to the other side. Plate goes a little quicker now that we've uh, done it once. Alrighty, front is complete. Fully back together, both sides. Gonna get you in there, fresh brakes. Definitely satisfying, definitely glad to have fresh brakes on it. Notching around where the uh, inner lug nuts are helped a lot, because putting the wheel back on, when I first put these on, I had to impact them on hard like top bottom left right and like work them on whereas this time it was like one impacting just one brought the whole wheel on basically before the lug nut had to dig into the rim to go on which is why it was so hard to get off so taking these rears off is my biggest dread at the moment once we get them off sigh of relief the rest is just normal work so the benefit too as much as it sucks to do this um at least now we're setting ourselves up better for if we ever get a flat you know if i ever do have to change a tire now that i will have a spare tire uh, I won't have to be trying to get these things off as difficultly as uh, on the side of the road. So anyway, enough jibber jabber, I'm gonna dive into the rear. All right, well, I got both outside rears off easy because they're not stuck on the lug nuts like the inner wheel is. So those popped off just like a normal wheel. Like you grabbed it, boom, came off. Uh, however, I already tried to drive with the one side, one wheel unbolted and the lug nuts partially threaded on, nothing. So I figured if I took the other one off, hopefully one of them will break free just backing up and driving forward and trying to turn a little bit. Success! We got them. It worked. Backed up, shimmied the truck around left and right and I uh, heard them both clunk and then they came off pretty easy past that. So we we're good to go. You can see how bad the rotor is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, wow. Yep, that's that's toast. The funny, the problem is I thought it was coming, the noise was coming from the front. And I got under there and looked, I'm like, oh, there's still some pad life left. It must just be the little squeaker deal. No, it was, it was the rears. And this last ship started grinding pretty good. And I was like, definitely got to change those. So anyway, at least we'll have all new brakes. One thing that is not the most fun about having a dually is, as you can see, the uh, rotor doesn't just come off. Once we take the caliper off, we got to pull this cap off, pull the axle out, pull the bearing out. Got to pull a lot of stuff out, pull this out, get to the bolts from the inside to swap the new rotor onto this hub put it all back together. So one thing I didn't get was new bearings and seals. So we're gonna have to do that. I think I have the right tool. We'll find out, but uh, yeah, enough jibber jabber. I'm gonna start tearing into this. All right, well, if you ever wondered what it's like to change brakes on a dually, I had to get a special tool. The one I had was a different one. It was a little too small. It was like that ratcheting deal. That's what holds it in. Wheel bearing, 
you know, you pull the axle out, then you got your hub, which your brake rotor bolts onto, and you can see that uh, these rotors are a little shot. They were not in good shape. Pads, a little, uh, little worn, a little worn. Uh, but anyway, uh, these are of course Ebits, and I have Ebits, but I don't have one this big. So I, you can put a 15 on it, it didn't seem like it was gonna go well. Seemed like it was gonna strip it. So we gotta track down now a 15 mil EBIT. I did get new wheel bearings, but uh, yeah, this is definitely turned turns into a rabbit hole. All right, well, just to show you guys that we all do dumb things. My defense, thought it was the front. Front looked all right. Here's the pads. Oh, this is that side of the pad. Here's the pads. Both of them. Both of them. Even the clips were getting ground down. Yeah. I'd say that's uh that's worn and then the rotor real good so yeah definitely definitely had to be done this is such a messy job as you can probably tell um, but we did get this side all squared away we got the special tool then we did so you can see the, the rotors on there I got to do the pads and put the caliper back on but uh yeah so <laughs> we needed an e18 which is like a reverse of a torx bit we went to Tractor Supply, which is the other way from where I lived, and we went all the way back to Lowe's, and we went to Advance. I gave up. I got some other sockets that were supposed to work on anything. I was like, we're gonna send it. And then Raldo was like, well, let's check O'Reilly's before we uh, head home, because it's on the way. They had it. And it's what the ironic thing is we were just there to buy the wheel bearings. <laughs> Could've just bought it if we knew. Uh, I don't know why Ford would use Ebits on these. I just don't get it, but hey, whatever. We're, we're moving on with our lives. We're, we're moving and grooving, we're getting this done, so. I'm gonna put this back together, and uh, I'll update. I'll do. We'll do a little snap ruski here. How about that? We can do a little snap. Eh. Oh, that was. Hold on. That was a weak one. And the plot thickens. Got the other side done. Had to push the caliper in. Had an issue there. This side pulled the pads out, and the piston popped out. As you can see, by the fluid. So went and bought two new calipers, which is changing, changing the whole thing, dang whole brake system. Yeah, all of it. All of it, not, not leaving a stone unturned. Uh, this side, when I was pushing it in, this little clip that like holds the boot in came out and both boots were like past the pistons anyway. So, uh, I mean, probably about time they're OEM. I mean, maybe they were replaced with OEM ones, but they're OEM calipers. Two, they, they get overextended when you wear the pads down that far, which, you know, my own dang fault. So self-inflicted, uh, not fun, but hey, one of those things. So anyway, Luckily, this is the great thing about American vehicles, parts store had calipers in stock. That is a big benefit. If you're gonna daily something in America, an American vehicle is nice for that reason. Okay, enough jibber jabber, I'm gonna get back to work. It's uh, it's getting dark, we still got a bit to do. I can only do a 24 from the inside. All right, well, unfortunately, we cannot mount that wheel on this tire machine. I don't think any normal tire shop is going to be able to mount it. I might try and call around. I think I'm gonna have to take it to the place I took these wheels originally, uh, which is a semi-truck shop. It's called the Chrome Shop, uh, 75 Chrome Shop. Uh, but that's a bit a bit of a ways from here. It's close to Ben, so I might be able to drop it off to him at Clutch Kickers, him take it there, and then I go pick it up. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, the good news is I did find the, the slow leak on my inside rear, which is the whole thing that prompted me getting a spare, and it was the valve stem. So interestingly enough, I didn't take off the inside, maybe there's a seal there, but there's no rubber between this nut and the, the wheel, um, and it was just leaking out of there. I sprayed soapy water on it, bubbling out pretty bad. So I siliconed the threads, I siliconed around it. So I siliconed it up basically. I'm gonna let that dry overnight, air it up in the morning. Hopefully we have no leak, that would be nice if it doesn't leak anymore. But if it does, it's, it's still a really slow leak, hopefully still a slow leak. <laughs> and uh, it's manageable for this trip and then we'll, we'll get the spare mounted. We'll have the spare ready for next trip and we'll have it with us worst case, you know, if we needed it, try to find a tire shop to mount it, I, I don't know. But anyway, I did get this side back together. I notched the inside wheel for the lug nuts, went on a lot easier, just like the fronts did. So again, the benefit is at least all these will come off more easily. So this side's back together besides the vanity cap. Just gotta check that other one in the morning, put that side back together, test drive it and make sure we're all good. All right, well, I let the old silicon carny dry overnight. Did the uh, soapy water test. So far, no weeky leaks. So that's good. Um, I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on it, but at least we can put this one back on for now. We're almost at the end of this journey. It's been a long one, boys. Let me tell you. 
this has been a journey. The one downfall to semi wheels, I'll tell you that much. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and notch this wheel. You can see all our witness marks from where it was rubbing on the lug nuts. That definitely makes a huge difference getting them on and off. So I'm gonna notch this wheel. We'll get it all back together. Go take it for a test drive. So sorry you guys haven't been able to hang out for all the uh, detailed aspects of it like normal. It's just been, I've been rushing through it. I just haven't had, haven't had time to wait for you guys for every, uh, every little step. I, I apologize. I apologize. I'm gonna get back to work. All right, boys, hopefully we're done. I mean, technically, we're done at the moment. Assuming no issues arise. Like I said, this has been a struggle. I applaud people who work on diesels every day, day in and day out, because I remember thinking about it when I built this truck, lifting the Cummins in and out, test fitting. I mean, it's a thousand pound engine. You're so, you get used to car stuff. Everything's small, everything's pretty compact. Everything's relatively light. You know, pulling a brake rotor off a car, and you're freaking dangling two fingers. These, no, they're 50 pounds each. You don't really think about it until you start working on a truck, and everything's bigger. All the bolts are bigger, all the bolts are torqued tighter, everything's tighter. So, anyway, I'm gonna go test drive it, make sure it's good. I'm leaving the rear caps off because I wanna come back and double check the torque spec on all the wheels after I put a little, a few miles on it. And then, if all that goes well, we are freaking done and dusted, boys. Keep your fingers crossed. I love the, the Cummins idle uh, when it's cold. Not cold out, but the engine's cold. All right, test drive complete. Made sure to get up to about 70, make sure there was no shake, because I did get the inside of every wheel with the drum sander pretty good, except for the outside rears, because those came off fine. Um, but just to make them easier to get on and off, I didn't want it to go too crazy, because then if they're not dead center, we're gonna have a shake. Do not want a shake. I'll sacrifice struggling to get the wheel off to not have a shake, but might as well make it as easy as possible. So anyway, everything seems good. Still full of brake fluid. I don't see any leak of leaks. I'm gonna double check though, make sure everything's good there. Um, truck feels good, it stops good. Okay, I'm jibber jabbering on. I am very glad to be, I don't, I don't wanna say the words. I don't wanna say the words. I'm glad we're, we're done with, I'm glad we're stopping working on this for now. <laughs> That's, there we go. Uh, I guess that's gonna be it for this video. We've got work to do on the Miata. We gotta do fuel system, we gotta do uh, new trans, and then if the tire, trailer tires come in in time, we gotta do new trailer tires. We got a lot to do this week before clutch kickers, so we gotta get after it. So anyway, it's gonna be it for uh, truck and trailer upgrades for now. Hope to see you guys later, but as of right now, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Goodbye, guys.